Hello, I am a Hertfordshire Master's student on the Games Art course with an Animation Bachelor's degree and I'm here to talk to you about my key issue which is the issue of neurodiverse employment. Is the VFX industry blind to neurodiversity? This generally less well talked about with employment with lots more movements geared towards ethnicity and gender although this seems to be changing rapidly over recent years with more understanding and early intervention for younger generations. And with the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, awareness of these communities within the industry has been catching up. I'm exploring how the pandemic have affected ideas and support with employees in the industry, as this figure is not quite in proportion, but the neurodiversity forecast could be set to change for the better as within the industry and my resources such as figures from UK Screen Alliance, things are clearly being done, but how much work has been done and how much work is there left to do? My interviewee was Isabel Stenhouse from Supermassive Games in London. I picked this practitioner as she visited my previous university as they have a festival each year for all of the animation, games and VFX students where they get around 8 to 10 practitioners in over a week to talk about their work and talk about a subject in the industry and answer questions from the students. And when she came in, she did a talk about her career and the elements of her practice. She does a lot of work with helping neurodiverse people and how they can be further integrated in the industry. Her masses of experience, her wide scope of area, she has also worked as a producer for many different companies over her 24-year career. UK Screen Alliance contain a series of lots of statistics with a survey conducted in September 2019. Their survey contained about 12% of respondents being neurodiverse or having a variety of disability. Half of these respondents reported having a learning disability such as ADHD or dyslexia, whereas 27.5% of those had a neurological condition such as autism, OCD or other mental health conditions like bipolar or schizophrenia. And this contains quite a big umbrella. This is roughly compared to around 15% having a neurological condition in the UK population according to the University of Edinburgh. So within the industry, it is almost in proportion with the population, but not quite there within the animation and VFX industries, as according to the research. Gamesindustry.biz states that just 16% of autistic people in the UK are in current employment and autistic estates 77% of those are looking for work which is a signification about how the industry needs to change to be more inclusive to those with neurological differences which could be a good argument for the games and VFX industries being blind although this could also be counter argued that in particular during the COVID-19 pandemic this has been discussed a lot more and many more p employment programs geared towards those who are neurodiverse especially with the rapid increase in diagnosis with high-functioning autism, which is now roughly one in every eight people because of a more modern understanding and early intervention, which could be a leading role for change in the games industry as more people get diagnosed, the more support will be available as everyone will know someone with the condition. A social issue with the condition is that this is usually heavily stereotyped which can harm an autistic person's employment prospects, such as the infamous PowerPoint, the young, the old and the useless, as shown by Alex St. John from Microsoft DirectX. This has highly offensive and disrespectful stereotypes of those with autism, and this definitely shows a sound argument that there is still a level of change that needs to be done. Stenhouse points out that the pandemic was an industry turning point and was not very well discussed with what she had viewed before COVID-19. Although this has changed and lots of discussions are being made to include training schemes, courses on inclusion and diversity. Some examples include Double Negative, which has an employee assistance program. Industrial Light and Magic have set up a group on neurodiversity, gender, sexuality and mental health. 
So it is clear that there is lots being done to improve the industry through multiple different studios and organisations arranging this and for those with different ethnic and neurological backgrounds as well as gender. Although women like men can also fall under the same umbrella and also be autistic, they represent around just a quarter of autism diagnosis according to two studies. One conducted by Leo Kanner in 1943 and a Swedish study conducted by Ellers and Gilberg in 1993, although there is a clear statistic as the number and ratio is determined by who is in the room with you. There are a number of theories according to autism.org.uk such as women usually better at masking, therefore hiding their difficulties, and more studies being conducted on males than females. This leads to not being diagnosed as quickly or at all as it is widely theorised the figures are much closer than this. Within an employment perspective, this could be argued to either a conclusion of having a more even number of a male to female neurodiverse ratio of employees compared to neurotypical ones. Within the industry as more people are diagnosed or males being less represented due to less of them being high functioning than females, although it is speculated that this number is much more even than current studies show as many high functioning individuals are diagnosed much later in life. According to Autistica, people with autism are 75% more likely to work in the games industry than other industries and around 80 million people in the world have autism according to this source. This demonstrates a huge market of unique minds to give new ideas and innovations to this industry. This is argued well by Mackey and explains a lot about why the market really needs to be an inclusive industry for the neurodiverse communities. Autistica explains that autistic workers have trouble communicating their needs and socialising, which is a sound argument for why these considerations and adaptations need to be made to allow them to fit in. But employers considering these and taking training to learn about neurodiversity and how to best support them will benefit the creative industry massively as autism comes with just as many positives for directors and producers as extra conditions. These new considerations for the creative companies will widely benefit them in the following ways. The creative industries and how they thrive typically is through new and unique ideas, although these are usually based on other ones. Employing different ethnicities and people with neurological differences in particular, these studios can come up with more diverse, inventive and original ideas as different ethnic groups think differently and they have come from different cultures and different customs and have a different story to tell whereas people with different neurologies think differently and can come up with new and exciting ways to do things and are also more likely to think of new and original ideas due to their different mindset. As this is further justified by Stenhouse, she states, Companies want a diversity of mindset, diversity of thinking, and the more it's highlighted, the better. This gives the studio more ideas and more original thinking. It could also benefit companies as it would direct them to solutions to problems that would not be widely thought of and could come up with a new in innovative and more streamlined way of making productions. In conclusion, overall, according to the investigation conducted into this issue, the industry has done lots of work in particular during the pandemic, although Stenhouse mentions this was not well talked about until then. This is pretty subjective and a difficult argument to prove overall as different people and usually these studios, it is more of a determination of how relevant it is to the individuals and the company. As the level of understanding overall on the spectrum continues and more women are diagnosed with autism, as they have generally a better level of masking as children, as mentioned by Russo, neurodiverse women will also become more included within the industry. Within the games and the animation industries, UKIE statistics state that the employment rate of those with neurological conditions is at 11%, with 2% representing employees on the autism spectrum. According to the BMA, 
Autistic people represent about 1% of the UK population, which puts the figures to a good number overall in proportion to the population. But the unemployment figures by gamesindustry.biz for also create a counter argument for this and suggest that these are underemployed by the industry, although this is overall a subjective topic as no individual company is going to have exactly the same statistics belonging to demographics as a competitor. The industry is doing lots of work to include neurodiverse candidates and increasing awareness to ensure that these communities have the same chances as neurotypical individuals, although this has only really started to be discussed recently as stated by Stenhouse, there is still more work that needs to be done to resolve this. Having neurodiverse people in senior roles will assist with both increasing the figures and also increasing the level of understanding and the adaptations they need. Although within neurodiversity, the level of employability is down to the individual, although these differences could be advantageous, such as for example, autistic people have an intense level of focus and often high levels of intellect due to these focuses or dyslexic people commonly thinking three-dimensional. It is still down to the, their personality and willingness to learn, just like a neurotypical. Thank you for listening.